What is your cybersecurity superpower? Today, we're going to have a discussion about that. Many times, it's very difficult to drill down into what we actually want to do in cybersecurity. And today, I'm going to give you something about defensive cybersecurity superpowers. Come along to Struggle Security. We're normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. Hello, my name is Gabriel Agarucci, and welcome back to Struggle Security, where we are doing what? What? We are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. Yeah! If this is your first time here, I want you to hit the subscription button and hit the notification bell so you can get more and more of this type of content. And today, we are gonna be hitting a subject that I really like, I really love this subject, and it's called, what is your cybersecurity superpower? A lot of times when people are looking to get into cybersecurity, whether they are transitioning from a different career field or they're coming straight out of school and very early in their career, the mass number of cybersecurity things to do can be super duper mass, right? It's very easy to get lost in the sauce. You got things like penetration testing, digital forensics and incident response. You got reverse engineering. You got SOC skills. You got so many different things that it's very easy to get confused. But today I want to kind of dispel some of this, dispel one of these struggles that you might be having with picking what you want to do in the field. Okay. And many times when you start off to try to understand what your superpower is, like, right, like, right, many of those Marvel characters where they're discovering who they are and discovering how they can contribute to a particular effort. What you want to do is kind of divide into two different categories. I look at cybersecurity in two different ways, defensive and offensive, defending against the bad guys or simulating the actions of the bad guys to find vulnerabilities before the bad guys find them. So today, I don't want to focus on both of those, but I want to drill down into that of defense. I want to look at the defensive cybersecurity skills that I think that are very important for you to discover what your cybersecurity superpower is. So we're going to start off with one of these examples, and that's in the form of SOC skills. And SOC stands for Security Operations Center, right? And this is, and so think of it as like the command center within companies, within organizations, where you are monitoring for malicious or out of bound or abnormal activity within computer systems, within networks. So you can have an understanding of what looks good or what looks bad and also be able to respond to what that is. Here are some a couple of skills that you might need to know in order to gain your SOC skills or gain your SOC superpowers, right? You need to know what looks normal and what looks abnormal normal in computers and network systems, right? What looks right, right? Should my domain controller be talking to the printers? Should my engineering workstations be talking to that laptop? Should this phone be executing this particular executable file within my network? You need to have an understanding of what looks good and what looks bad within your networks and systems that, that you're monitoring. This also comes in understanding certain terms, right? certain um, acronyms, things like a SIM, right? Security information and event monitoring systems. That's important, right? Intrusion detection systems and intrusion protection systems. Intrusion de detection systems and protection systems, they have the ability to spring into action to say when something bad happens, that automatically they give an indication or they give an action to protect against the bad that they've been able to see. EDR, right? Endpoint detection and response. This is actual software agents or software files that are installed on machines. Endpoints, right? Uh, laptops, uh, phones, uh, workstations, uh, servers. These EDR solutions are installed on there and that if something happens bad on that machine, these EDR solutions are able to tell the SIM in many cases if something bad has happened. And of course, when one that probably everybody knows is antivirus or AV. Right? Antivirus is something that's looking for particular antivirus or virus signatures within networks, within systems, within hosts to tell people, people with those SOC skills, if something bad is happening so that you're able to respond to it. So those are a couple of things as it concerns SOC skills, but even here are some advanced things as it concerns some of these SOC skills. It's very important that as more of a senior practitioner that you're able to ingest threat intelligence information with the paid or open source and feed it into your defensive systems and tune them to the point where you're able to say, OK, I see that something bad is happening over here. This report or this threat intelligence feed is telling me this. Now, let me take that, put that into my own defenses. And now I'm able to tune them to the point where I'm able to say, OK, that threat exists in my environment or that threat does not exist. So this might come in learning different things like learning how to write Yara rules right, or Sigma rules or learning regular experience questions or learning how to automate Windows command line tools or PowerShell scripts for that detection and that analysis. So that's something else that's there with those SOC skills, right? So SOC skills is one of these sub 
superpowers that you're able to acquire. And hopefully I've been able to explain some. And even as I'm talking, I want you to just jot down some of these acronyms, some of these words that I'm mentioning and kind of dig down deeper into what those skills actually are so that you can gain an understanding if this is your superpower. Another one that I want to go over before we end the video is that of DFIR skills. What does that stand for? Digital Forensics and Incident Response. So this is a power within itself. And these are folks typically that are directly involved in responding to when bad things happen. They respond, they collect images, they analyze, they reverse engineer. They're the people that to say that when, you know, quote unquote, Russia gets into your systems, these are these DFIR skills are ones that kick in to fight against that particular threat. So some of this might come in the form of analyzing network traffic for evidence, right? To be able to understand if there is something malicious happening. One thing that's very common to a lot of adversary activity is that when bad guys get into systems, they set up something called a C2, right? A C2 infrastructure, which stands for command and control. This is when they are able to get into systems. And they, a lot of times bad guys want to talk back to their own computer systems to be able to command or to initiate code execution within the environment that they've harassed or the environment that they've compromised. So many times that C2 activity can be seen because what happens is that bad guys talk over the internet back to back to themselves in the C2 infrastructure. So looking at network traffic gives you ability to detect if there is C2 activity happening, seeing if bad guys are talking back to their servers and environments, or even doing something called data exfiltration. Another one for DFIR skills is that of being able to pull images for potentially compromised computer systems from later analysis. As an incident responder, you might need to have the ability to collect images, um, which are pretty much copies of computer systems and files. You, know, you need to take that off a machine and be able to do what you call offline analysis. Many times, if there's an active compromise happening, you don't wanna go in there and be able to modify or change things because the more and more that you touch systems, the more and more that you are messing with the evidences that are there. So pulling an image allows you to not compromise or mess up whatever evidences are there, but rather it allows you to pull those images off for analysis where you're not affecting the compromised environment. You can do that with free and open source tools like DD, such as Data Dump, which stands for Data Dump, Mandiant's Redline tool, or even the FTK Imager Lite. These tools will allow you to pull those images and evaluate and inspect for malicious behavior, very similar to like an autopsy. So many times when a computer system has been compromised, you want to be able to pull that image off and be able to evaluate it for what malicious activity happened on there so that you might be able to identify who the bad guy is. This is not an exhaustive list of all of the defensive cybersecurity the superpowers that you can get. You can acquire more and more. This is not an exhaustive list, but I do want to give you an introduction to it. So next time we'll do more on that of offensive superpowers. Hopefully this has been valuable to you and thank you for coming to Struggle Security where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. Thanks.